Hi, friends. Michael Albert here. How are you? All's well here. I'm going to record a new video demonstration of one of my projects. And it is going to be one of my what I call brandscapes. And a brandscape is a word I think I invented, which is uh, a landscape. And when, a, when an artist draws or paints a landscape, it's usually a nature scene, you know, uh, flowers, fields, mountains, rivers, lakes, stuff like that. Um, but my brandscapes are landscape ideas made with brand packages. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean, and I'm going to demonstrate how to make one. Um, by the way, for those of you who don't know, uh, I'm an artist and an author. This is my book. It's called An Artist's America, and it's been out for about 12 years, and it's in libraries across the country, and people who are interested in art have come across it, and art teachers sometimes use it. It has different examples of the art that I make. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm, I guess I'm mostly known for making collages out of cereal boxes. And, um, but my brandscape idea is something that I came up with where I use the different colors from assorted packages to create these brandscape ideas. And before we get started, let me just remind you of what we need for this project. The first thing we need is a pair of scissors. So find yourself a pair of scissors. And these are actually my special orange handled scissors. You can see they're a little worn. They have some dried glue in there. So they fit my hand perfectly. And they cut really well. And I've been using these for 25 years. It's like my most special tool. Um, then some glue, regular Elmer's glue will do. Um, clear glue that you get at the Staples, you know, office supply store. Glue sticks will work. Um, I actually use this stuff, which is called Linaco, and it's a neutral pH adhesive. It's a acid-free glue, but it's essentially it's a white glue, just like the Elmer's that dries clear. And you can find this online, Linaco natural pH adhesive. That's what I like to use. Um, the other thing you're going to need is some sort of a board to work on. And here's a piece of museum board that I get from a frame shop that I work with. He gives me all his scrap. Um, but you can also use the type of cardboard that is the back of a writing pad, um, cardboard boxes that the things we get in the mail come in is comes in a thicker kind of cardboard called corrugated and you could use a piece of that you could cut off a piece of the side of the box or use one of the flaps or the bottom of the box or something like that and that'll work just fine here's a piece of that type of box that I'm working on a project right now um, but for the project I'm going to do today I'm going to do a little piece of cardboard that I cut from a larger board, because I'm going to just do one flower to show you. But before we get started, um, the other thing you're going to need are different boxes of different colors to create your brandscape. And cereal boxes are great. You know, cereal boxes come with, come in all different colors and they have pictures and images. They have letters and words and logos and all sorts of assorted different images on there that are, if you look closely at them, you can decide to use them. Look at these frosted mini weights. Maybe you want to make a snow covered field. And I would, I would think that these frosted mini weights cut up into pieces could maybe look like a, a snowy mountain or a snowy field. Um, that's an idea I just had actually. Um, See, so you come up with different ideas when you really look at these boxes. Here's some yellow, which is good for the petals of flowers or the sun. 
Um, as you can see, a lot of the boxes I have have been gently or not so gently used already because I cut all sorts of pieces from all these types of packages to make my collages. Um, we have this churros box. It's got some very nice purple on it. Um, and actually the back of the churros box has some great green, some blue sky. Uh, you might want to put a soccer ball in your field. You know, it's, it's up to you to decide what you're going to want to do. Also, by the way, tissue boxes are great. Tissue boxes have really nice patterns on them and can be used for different different things. So <sighs> cardboard packages like that are one type of material you can use. Another are old magazines, catalogs, junk mail, old stickers, labels, photographs, all sorts of printed material that come on either cardboard or paper that you might have lying around your home or office um, or school, uh, in your recycle bin, things maybe you've collected and you don't know what to do with, um, are all possible materials to use for these types of projects. Um, so let's get started with one of the brandscapes. Um, I did want to show you a couple of ideas first, and then I'll show you how I make one. So this was one of my first brandscape ideas. Uh, which is sunflowers. And I created this because I love the sunflowers painted by Vincent van Gogh, one of the most famous artists that ever lived. And um, his sunflowers are beautiful. Um, these are also kind of inspired by uh, one of the original pop artists, whose name is Andy Warhol. And if you look up Andy Warhol and his flowers, you'll see he did some of his silkscreen paintings of flowers, and they don't really look realistic, you know? Van Gogh's sunflower paintings are realistic uh, in a way, but Van Gogh, uh, Andy Warhol's are not. And mine actually aren't really realistic. I mean, maybe when you look at this, you could tell that these are sunflowers, but also when you look closely, you see that they have words on them and different images and you can tell that the pieces that I've used to create this sunflower collage are from different packages, you know? So I even put a bee down here buzzing around, which comes from the honey made graham crackers. So those are my sunflowers. One more that I wanted to show you before we get started is this, and these are poppy flowers. Poppy flowers are a red, petaled flower that have a black inside. So I cut a black circle to be the inside of the flower. I cut red pieces to represent the petals. I cut green to be the stems and a lighter green to be the leaves. And then an assortment of blue pieces to represent the sky in the background. These seven little pieces of yellow represent the sun. And one thing I always do in my collages is over here, you could see that I put my initials M-A for Michael Albert as a way to sign my collages. I always sign the back of my work with my autograph. I write the date and the title of my work. And sometimes I even put other information on there, but I never write on the front of my collage. The way that I indicate that, you know, that it's mine, the way that I sign it in a in a collage type of way is by putting my initials MA somewhere in my work. Actually, if you look at the sunflowers I just showed you, the MA is a little harder to find. It's actually down here, MA. Can you see that? But when you kind of look at it from afar, it's hard to see. So hopefully you have your materials collected. If not, you can pause this video and see what you have lying around. Get your scissors and glue on a board and we'll start working. So I'm gonna be working on a single flower collage on a little piece of cardboard like this. And I actually have cut some pieces to save a little time. And I'll show you that I 
I found this green on one of the boxes and I made a little stem. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is take my glue and put it on the piece. And what I do is I put a little bit of glue on the piece and then I use my finger to spread it out evenly. It needs to be spread out evenly across the whole back of the piece. And then I put it where I want it to go. As I glue pieces down, I'll hold it up and show you. So see, here's my stem. Now I cut two pieces also from the back of that churro cereal box into the shape of leaves. So I'm gonna glue down my leaves. Again, I put a little bit of glue on there. I use my finger to spread it out. And then I glue it down, do both leaves before I show you. So I can move a little faster. But um, there we go. So, so far we've got the stem and the leaves. Now, I cut some little yellow pieces to be the petals of this flower. And I cut a little piece of purple to be the center of the flower. So my idea was to make a yellow flower with a purple center. And I'll start out with the purple center. Now I'm gonna cut my, I mean, I'm gonna glue my petals down. And one thing I didn't mention was that often when I make my art, I do things in, in series of sevens. So I decided while I was cut getting these pieces ready for this collage, that I was gonna pick seven yellow pieces to represent the seven petals. And I can show you again on my sunflowers that the sevens that I did, there's seven sunflowers. And each of those seven sunflowers have seven petals. And the sun that I showed you on those poppy flowers was made of seven pieces of yellow. So that's just something I do as an artist. I'm not exactly sure why, but I do it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here's six so far. I'll do one more. Let's see. And, uh, okay, so there we go with um, the yellow purple flower. Um, I also found some blue to be the sky and I'm gonna cut these blue into pieces. Um, put this in the top, cut this kind of into some chunks and I left a little white on there because the white could kind of represent a cloud, you know? So here, doing my sky. My pieces are always mosaic, which means they don't, I don't layer them. I don't glue pieces on top of each other. I glue them next to each other. Um, traditional mosaics are made either out of glass pieces or ceramic pieces. It's kind of a ancient art form. And, um, but mine are made of cardboard and I don't overlap my pieces. You know, that's not to say that your pieces can't overlap if you want them to. You're the artist and it's really up to you. Here, see how my sky is coming together. So I'm gonna cut a few more, glue a few more pieces of the sky down. Um, I like to really fill in most of my pieces and not leave a lot of space, but we're working pretty fast right now for this video, so I'm just kind of giving you an idea of what to do. I'm not going to be able to come totally finish it because I like really filling in little pieces to, to call my work finished. But I think you get the idea that the blue pieces with the white represents the sky and the clouds. 
Then I had another green that came on this uh, came on this organics cornflakes box. You can see there's some other. It's a little bit lighter green. It's nice, and I. I'm going to use that to represent the grass at the bottom of my collage. Again, I'm putting put glue on every single piece. And I use my finger and I spread it out. You know, I found an A to represent the uh, my initial for my last name, Albert. And what I wanted to show you is that. I was going to use this piece to make my own M because sometimes I cut out the letters that I find and other times I create my own letter. So here, watch how I make a little M out of this little piece. Got to cut it very carefully. It's a lot of practice. And so here's, here's my M. Put a little bit of glue on there. And I'm going to put it just over my, over the A. And then I cut a couple of little pieces of this same green color that I wanted to represent grass. And I'm going to put it fill in the bottom of it over here. And I'll show you what I got. Kind of has a little grass-like effect. It's pretty fun. It's almost like the flower is growing on a field, you know, on a, on a lawn. Sometimes flowers grow on lawns. Um, so I think you're getting the idea. You know, a flower is really just one idea that you can try, but you could also try a tree, a mountain, a river. Here we go. And oh, you could see this piece hanging off the edge over here. What I do is I trim it from the back. And like I said, I'm not done yet, but I have the flower, I have some of the sky, I have my initials MA down here. I've got some grass and I'm still going to fill in some of these white spaces, but that's really how I do it. So think about what type of flower or natural scene that you want to create with your for your collage. And let me show you just a couple more of my originals just to give you some more food for thought. Here's one. It's actually a tree. I cut from a brown box, maybe a Cocoa Puffs box or a Hershey's chocolate box, the tree trunk, and I cut it into kind of an unusual shape. I used green to represent the leaves on the tree and a light blue to be the faraway sky and some dark blue pieces to represent the closer sky. You could see my initials MA up here, and they're kind of shiny. Can you see that? Because I think they were from a Reynolds wrap box. Reynolds wrap has a metallic type blue with silver, and I use the silver letters. So when the light hits it, it shines like that. It actually looks pretty cool, you know? And then I use the, some green pieces that have some writing on them to represent the ground. The, the, the ground that the tree is growing on. Um, I think I, I mentioned earlier that you could use tissue boxes. This one is called Three Flowers by the Sea. So I created one, two, three flowers. This is an image of a mountain in the distance that was on some package. But over here is a sailboat in the water. And that was actually from a tissue box. So I created a flower scene um, using some, some other images from different packages that I had. And then up top over here, whoops, 
is my MA, which actually comes from the Wegmans um, brand logo. I don't know if you have Wegmans near you, but it's a big supermarket chain. It's upstate New York and it's in a bunch of states now. Here's one called Autumn in Allentown, where I cut brown pieces again to represent trees. And then I use some autumn colors, yellow, orange, a little bit of green, it stays green until all the green turns. Down here is my MA initials. And there's little pieces of blue and dark blue to represent the sky. So that's called Autumn in Allentown, which I created when I did a project in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Here's one of my favorite flower collages, which is called Red Flowers in the Midnight Sky. It's got a, I love this one. This is really a beauty. It's on a black board and it's uh, red pieces to represent these, the flower petals, green for the stems and the leaves, a dark blue for the sky on a black background and a little sun, which you normally wouldn't see at night. So it's a real artistic type piece. Um, I'm gonna show you two more and then we'll be, finished. Uh, this is called the letter tree. This is a little weird because I cut a, one of my um, tree out of brown, but then instead of using color, I put letters. So I call this the letter tree. And that's, I don't even know if you could tell that it's a tree, but there's some blue in the background. And this, this looks like land, these pieces, and my initials MA are down below. And it's an assortment of letters that are representing the leaves. Um, yeah, the other thing I wanted to show you was more of a more of a scene than just a tree or a flower. But this is like a garden scene. And there's seven different flowers. I told you I do things in sevens. There's also seven clouds. This was done on a nice sort of bluish gray board background. And then the spiral here in the sun. And so this is a garden. So I think you get the idea that you can take the colors and designs and patterns from an assortment of these printed materials, whether it's cardboard packages of cereal boxes, cookies, crackers, soda cartons, all that kind of stuff, or magazines, catalogs, junk mail, any kind of printed material that you might have on hand. Think of what kind of a nature scene you wanna make, and then you can create your own brandscape. So thanks for listening to me and watching this video, and I hope you have fun making your brandscape. I'm sure your library would love to see your work, so you could either photograph or scan whatever you make and send it in, and I'm sure they'd be Happy to post it on their Facebook and on their web page and say, look at what our what somebody in our community made, you know, after watching one of the videos that we posted. I think that would make them very happy. And um, you know, again, enjoy making the art because uh, that's what art is supposed to be. Let yourself be creative, come up with your ideas, see what kind of materials you have on hand, and just experiment, see what happens. Okay, there's no wrong way to do this. And, um, and who knows, you might create a masterpiece. Uh, so I will catch you later. Thanks so much for watching and uh, talk to you soon. Bye friends. Here's the thing I made. I'll finish it later. Bye.